Many have been outspoken about the cuts made to the fire department this year. Why or why not do you believe they were necessary? You know, this is, people think that I woke up someday, one day and said, you know what, let's cut as many fire department, members of the fire department as we can. Let's see how many guys we can upset. Let's upset the most politically active group in the city. Let's upset the most well-organized uh, union in the city. That's preposterous. Why they're necessary is because we have a fire department now that matches a size of a city of 30, 33,000 people. I did my research. This wasn't a knee-jerk reaction. All right, for years, I've looked at our, our size of our fire department. It, it makes no sense. I mean, if you look at, the, if you just purely look at the numbers, you now just the lieutenants, just the lieutenants alone within the fire department cost us over eight hundred thousand dollars. The department as a whole is between eight to nine million dollars. We bring in eleven million dollars in property taxes. Now, if you looked at, and again, it's doing the research. If you looked at the the significant downtime between calls, and that's something I researched. I looked at a full year span, right, and I looked at how what the downtime is between calls. It's quite significant, and it's not an aberration either. It's routinely you'll see a, a lot of time in between down calls. So when you look at that, you look at the demographics of the city. You look at that we're an older city. 20% in poverty, a declining population, that makes you start to think, well, gee, is there another way that we could do things? You know, what, what other cities, what are other cities doing? Again, I did the research. Let me give you some examples. Auburn's about 27,365 people. Now, that's including the prisoners as well. So if you look at that population, we have 3,000 people per square mile. All right, and this wasn't something that I just did in preparation for this interview. This is something I did months ago, okay? Months ago in preparation for our budget. And if I'm gonna make a decision, all right, especially going into election year, this is not a group I'm going to want to offend, but my job is to fix the economic situation that we're in for the taxpayers. We have 3,000 people per square mile. Let's look at some similar size cities. Okay, you can look at Geneva, but Geneva's a little smaller. Okay, so Geneva doesn't have a full-time fire department like we do. So Glen Clove, New York, 19 square miles, 4,000 people per square mile. Fire and emergency medical services, right, they're all volunteer. Their fire department budget, $800,000. Ours is eight to $9 million. Okay, now these aren't Matt Smith facts. You can go online yourself, anyone go online, you can see this yourself. Now, our lieutenants, just the lieutenants we have in the fire department, cost us more than the Glen Cove Fire Department as a whole. And by the way, all the fire personnel, as I said again, were all volunteer. Let's go to Middletown, New York. 5,476 uh, people per square mile. So more so than Auburn. Population, 27,886. Bigger city than Auburn. Fire personnel, 32 full-time. 80 volunteer. Now what's their budget? 2.8 million dollars. Again, ours is between seven to eight. I can go on and on. North Tonawanda, okay, it's near Buffalo. Similar situation. So for my opponents to say that this, our current, all three of them have said, Mr. D'Angelo, Mr. Cuddy, and Mrs. McCormick have all said that this is the only way we can staff our fire department and that they would have kept all 10. That is one, that's not a progressive way of thinking. Two, how are you gonna pay for it? This department has not been touched by cuts in years. They've been protected by, with this minimum manning clause, which is really the budget killer, is this minimum manning clause. And, and I've said to you before, and you've heard me say this, when I first took office, we went to the NICOM uh, conference, and their top labor attorney. And someone else asked a question about minimum matting in any department. He interrupted the, 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 the gentleman, the representative from the city, asking the question. He says, listen, you just said two words, minimum matting. 
He says, don't ever negotiate that in the contract because it is a budget breaker. That is killing us. And it's not because of safety. Because if, 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 if the firemen were so concerned with safety, over 30% of them live outside the city under the protection of a volunteer fire department. My opponents like to put fear into people's minds, and that's not the way to lead. You don't lead by instilling fear. You lead by letting people see the reality of the situation. And that's what I've done. That's what I've done. I, I, I've told, I've, it's been very unpopular. It's caused more political grief for me, that's for sure, because I have a very active group that's campaigning for my opponents. But I'm not in here to make decisions that will help Matt Smith get reelected. Uh, that's not the way I've governed for eight years. I made a promise, uh, I made a commitment, I should say. I don't make promises as elected official, I made a commitment. I made a commitment my first year in office. I will not spend four years in office running for re-election. Three candidates have made promises and they've put it on the backs, on the credit cards of the Auburn taxpayer. 